Hey, good morning to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. It is Wednesday, March 24th, so good morning to you. I hope you have a very blessed day today. We have some very severe weather that did update overnight tonight, guys, and it went all the way to moderate now. So I will give you the update as far as severe weather as well as the Arctic outbreak that is still coming in. I'm still showing that we're going to have freezing temperatures all the way even to the south. If you like updates on that Arctic outbreak, and make sure you hit that subscribe button because I do upload every single day, guys. Now, right now we have it up to a moderate, and this happened overnight last night. So the tornado chances for a significant tornado is Memphis, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, Birmingham, Alabama, Jackson, Mississippi, and Huntsville, Alabama. And that's in a 15% for significant, and it went up to 15% early this morning. This is the latest runs. You have your moderate and your red. You have your enhanced and the yellow, and you also have your, your 5% in the brown and your 2% in the, in the green as well. Now the two videos I have for you guys up today is a very top one. It's your significant tornado perimeters. It shows you the whole run of what's going to happen in the deep south as far as this big outbreak. It is going to be a tornado outbreak. And the one right above my head is showing you the whole system running through the whole country all the way to the northeast. That way you can see exactly what's going to happen. So if you would also like another update this afternoon on this severe outbreak that's about to happen, not the Arctic blast, just the, the severe weather, uh, hit the like button. Let me know that you do want to update this afternoon because this is going to start late tonight into early tomorrow morning. So there could be some new details that could help. Now Wednesday there will be some storms, but mainly what that's going to do is just fill the atmosphere with a bunch of moisture for this next system when it comes through for it to have this big dangerous vent that's about to happen. And by 3 p.m. on Wednesday, that's what you're looking looking at right here. This is 3 p.m. It starts picking up its signature tornado perimeter, and it does get pretty powerful for a couple cells in southern Louisiana. But then it really pumps up when you get from 11 o'clock Wednesday night to midnight this is going to be nocturnal guys and this is going to be a big supercell it gets very strong on your your tornado perimeters and they get super powerful and once you hit six o'clock seven o'clock in the morning for louisiana for mississippi this is when the wind shear gets worse and this is when your perimeters get the strongest this is the strongest out of the whole system and if you look down here on the bottom the max is at 9 10 with the pink and this is definitely in the max Matter of fact, last night we saw it go all the way up to 13. Uh, I see it's gone down to about 12, but it did go up to 13 last night. Now, when you go from noon to 1 o'clock in the afternoon on Thursday, that's when this system is really going to ramp up and you have a very high chance for tornadoes. Not only that, you have very high wind shear going with it as well. And you can see the numbers have gone down to about 10, but the max was 13 yesterday and the highest is 10 on, on the level so this is way beyond the highest of the ledger and as you go into 4 p.m this afternoon it's still ramping up it's getting a little bit stronger now you know you're getting some 11s in there and all you saw was 10s so it's going to carry over in alabama and it will carry over into georgia and tennessee as well about six o'clock it starts winding down five six o'clock five o'clock strong six o'clock it starts winding down for alabama so that's good news for you alabama and this is going to affect Tennessee and mostly western Tennessee as well. Matter of fact, I'm showing some of these possibilities go all the way up to Illinois and Indiana. So right around 11 o'clock to noontime for Tennessee, it'll start really ramping up for you. But when you get to 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon on Thursday, that's when the severe starts passing by. That's when these 10s and 11s, even up to 13 again, I expect it to go back up. We done got enhanced all the way up to moderate already. And look, you even see a good spot of over six to seven just going into northern kentucky so this will be a dangerous event going all the way into the afternoon especially for tennessee and when you look at your supercell composite to see how many of these cells are actually going to form along this thunderstorm and create multiple cells where it could be multiple tornadoes as you go through early in the morning on thursday this is seven eight o'clock in the morning when you get around one o'clock in the afternoon that's when you'll start ramping up to your highest chance for supercell activity and that purple right there is in the 25 to 30 range percent range and it's almost to the 35 and the biggest chance for supercells is going to be one two o'clock in the afternoon on thursday all the way until 7 p.m on thursday afternoon that's when your strongest is going to be and you're still going to have that threat for alabama but then it will start to go down as the evening goes down and the wind shear, which, which helps create the rotation for these storms. If you look here, this red right here is around 40 to almost 50 knot winds already. 
but this brown that you're seeing is already in the 50s. And I'm showing all the way from, from 90 to 100 knot winds is going to be possible uh, with this storm. Now early in the morning, around 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, you do have the 50 knot winds and the 60s that's passing by. But as soon as you get into the afternoon, around 1 o'clock in the afternoon, it starts picking up. And this is around 60, 70 uh, knot winds, which is getting even more powerful. But once you get to around noon time and 1 p.m., you have this very max 100 knot winds. And you can see it down here, 95 and 100 is a very dark uh, maroon color that you have and that's what this is right here in the middle and this is a hundred matter of fact it's picking up 112 uh, down here so this is very strong shear that is going to be passing through with this system as it moves to the east it goes into southern illinois southern indiana also kentucky and tennessee you can see these hundred knot winds that do pass by and matter of fact it's still at 117 knot winds so it's very strong shear that's coming across these storms and it don't start winding down to around midnight uh, Thursday night. But you get some nice Cape values, just like the ones we saw the other day. You get over 3,000. And if you watch as the day goes along, right around 4 or 5 p.m., it starts getting some good almost 2,000 uh, Cape values. But once it gets to the, the early afternoon, all this moisture is getting in its atmosphere now. And it's making it very conducive for severe weather activity. Then we have that low pressure system that moves in and then all after all day wednesday it gives it nothing but moisture and then the low pressure system moves in for thursday now by six seven o'clock thursday morning the whole area is full of moisture it is primed and ready for severe storms a storm system comes by with some good wind shear we have great uh northerly winds coming from the south and now it's picking up all this energy and now it's getting some very strong cape values over 3100 uh, for Mississippi and it just travels east to the northeast and by 8 p.m. 9 p.m. at night it'll start really settling down to about 1500 now you still got chances for tornadoes with 1500 but it's not as severe as 3100 matter of fact for Texas Wednesday afternoon it's going to start for y'all right around 6 7 p.m. you're going to start having some long-lived cells that's going to be passing through look at that one that one has a, a nasty hail core to it now this is when all this Cape values is starting to strengthen up. You are getting some cells. You do have a chance for tornadoes for Louisiana and Mississippi, but it's only a two to five percent chance. So this is really when it don't have a lot of uh, shear going on. It has some, but it's still low. But there's still a chance for tornadoes. But these serious cells are going to carry over uh, from Wednesday into Thursday. So Wednesday evening they pass through uh, central to eastern Texas, and look, look at it. That's right there is a supercell. See how you have multiple cells, long track cells together, and this is going to be a supercell activity. Now, right around midnight, you can see all the cells out here, and this is Wednesday evening. Every single one of these cells, this is a big supercell uh, possibility with all these cells, with, with all these cells, with all these hail cores uh, in them. It's going to be a very dangerous event. You get early in the morning, right around 1 a.m., that's when you start getting some more long track cells passing through Texas that you need to watch out for. And look at that one. That's a nice kidney bean one right there with a nasty hail core on both sides. And this is going to last all, all Wednesday evening, all the way until Thursday morning, 6 o'clock in the morning. By 8 o'clock in the morning, it's moved away from Texas, and now things are starting to crank up for the south for Louisiana and Mississippi. And these will carry into Arkansas as well. So as we go through 2 p.m. on Wednesday, you can see that all these cells start to fill up uh, the atmosphere is what it's doing. It's just giving it a lot of moisture. That way when that, that storm system comes by with all that shear, it won't have to fill up the atmosphere. It's already been filled uh, with all this that's gonna happen Wednesday. And there's a lot of nasty little cells. This is a supercell look right there where you have all them cells with all them hail cores inside of it. And this will fill up the whole atmosphere all Wednesday afternoon. And as you go into your Thursday, right around 11 o'clock to noontime, you start getting some more cells coming into this atmosphere. That's when you're getting more shear buildup. Now, this is when it goes from 50 knot winds to 70 knot winds to 100 knot winds. And you can see that it starts getting extreme as it builds throughout the day. Now, right after noontime is when it starts getting really serious. You get a lot of hail cores all across Alabama, also in parts of Georgia. But Mississippi has it really bad. And look, these hail cores are starting to get somewhat serious now. And they are everywhere. Look at the color of that hail core. 
That is just nasty. And this is by 3 p.m. It's going to be cells everywhere. And each one of these could very easily be a tornado popping up. Look at that hail core on that cell. That's right at 4 p.m. That's a real nasty one. So you're going to need to be on guard all morning, all afternoon long as this goes across Alabama into northern Georgia as well. And after these cells leave Texas in the beginning of this run, they're going to hit uh, Arkansas pretty bad. So you can see right around 11 p.m. on Wednesday night, 11, 12 p.m., you got long track cells. You got some nasty little hail cores with them. But all these cells, all these storms is passing right through Little Rock, Arkansas. And then early in the morning on Thursday, you got another set of cells that's coming through. And these are some nasty little cells. And they're going to be coming through as well, as well as this long track one right here by Texarkana. You need to watch out for that one right by 9 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. That's when it's leaving Texas. Now it's going to be Arkansas's problem. After it leaves Texas, you still got cells all morning long going all the way through. And look at the hail core on that one right by Russellville. Right around noontime uh, for Thursday, so you need to be aware. At the same time, you got all this problem for lower Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. You're also going to have it for Arkansas. And these are some very long-lived cells all the way until 2 p.m., Thursday afternoon, Arkansas. You're going to have a problem, especially Little Rock. This is getting about 9, 10 o'clock in the afternoon. On Wednesday night, you can see the cells leaving northeast Texas. And that's when it about leaves for them because they will have these nasty cells all the way into the early morning for Thursday. But you can see how it spreads all the way out across Tennessee, across uh, Arkansas, Illinois. Uh, also, Indiana gets in on it. And so does Ohio on these storms as it spreads all the way out. Around 11, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, right past Little Rock. Those nasty cells I showed you. Oh, that's a super cell composite right there. Multiple cells going. At the same time, you got Mississippi full of these cells. Eric, look at all these cells. Then you got western Alabama, southern Tennessee. And this is going to go northern. No, there's those nasty cells I showed you with the white. Look at that. That's a big hail core. That's going to be some large hail that's going to come out of that. And then as it's going towards Alabama, it's also going up into southern Illinois. With all these nasty cells as they go by. Look at that long line of cells. And not only for the severe weather, we, we still, I'm still showing we're going to have this cold temperatures coming in, guys. Been following it for a while. Now it's getting a lot closer. Now it's getting about seven, eight days away. It's not far at all, and it's still holding steady. Uh, this is a GFS, and it is showing you that right around, it starts making a dip right around the 29th. But you can see that right around the, the 1st of April, the 2nd of April, it goes right into a negative 2 phase. And it showed a negative 2 about a week ago. So it's still showing confirmed that it's going to be a negative 2 a dip of Arctic Oscillation that will come down into our country. And it will drag on. Matter of fact, I'm showing that the second bump all the way to the 7th and the 8th is still there. Even the CMC model is even picking up that we have a big anomaly that's going to be coming in right around the 1st of April to 2nd of April. We have a good chance for some Arctic air to come down with the second bump from the 6th to the 7th of April. So it's still going to be that one-two punch. Even the Euro is starting to get on track now because it's not a long-range model at all. But it's starting to pick up there. Everything's going to be on a down phase now in the Arctic Isolation coming in. And right around the 2nd of April, it is picking up that we're going to have a dip of cold air. Now, this is your temperature anomaly, 850 millibars up. Uh, it's about 3,200 to 5,000 feet. That way you can see what's going on. Now, you see that we get a strong low pressure system coming up out of Canada. And what this is going to do, this is spinning counterclockwise. It's a low pressure. High pressure spin clockwise. Low pressure spin counterclockwise. So as it moves across Canada, it's going to pull down all this cold Arctic air. And it's going to pull it into our country. And this is going to last for a few days. There's going to be a couple of dips of cold air. And then it's finally going to reach all the way as far as it can to the south. And by the time we get to the second, it's going to be all the way down south, even all the way into Mexico. Look, Mexico's even getting all that cold air. All this cold air is still coming. And the way your temperatures are going to look is by April 1st, and this isn't no April Fool's, but April 1st to the April 2nd, the northeast is going to be in frozen temperatures. You're going to be in teens to 20s, as well as the Ohio Valley, to a little bit of the 30s, but you're going to be freezing. And with the wind chill, it's going to put the New England states in negative temperatures or single digits once again, while the whole northeast is going to be in the teens, and it's going to feel very cold. And these cold 30-degree 30, 30 temperatures are still reaching into the south. Matter of fact, the, cold, the warmest is going to be for northern Florida and southern Louisiana is going to be in the 40s. 
and that's just regular temperatures. Everybody else is in the 30s. And when you add the wind chill to it, it's going to feel very cold. So if you are gardening or putting any plants or anything up in these temperatures, you need to bring them inside. Even the GEM uh, model is picking up. Guys, this, this is trending. It's been trending for a few days now. Uh, it is picking up that on April 2nd that we will have, this is the Midwest, you will have single digits to freezing temperatures coming into our country. And it will reach all the way down into Texas. Southern Texas will be in the 50s, but you'll be in the 20s for Northern Texas and you'll be in freezing temperatures for Central Texas as well as Oklahoma. And here's another shot showing you all the 30s that you're going to be having in the South, in the Southeast. It is going with a bunch of models now. It is trending, guys. As a matter of fact, you're going to be in the, the high 20s to very low uh, 30s for Tennessee. All right, guys, and I will update this this afternoon. Just let me know if you want an update just by hitting the like button. If I see all them likes on there, I'll know that y'all want one. Of course, it's going to be majority rules. It's got to be that way with a community. But God bless every single one of you today. I hope you are very safe, and especially for tomorrow. All of you that's in the path of the storm, please, guys, this is such a significant event. I cannot warn others without you warning them for me. Please share the video. Alert others. Let them know this is coming. This is a real thing. Now, I know some of you don't use social media, and that's fine, too. You can support easily just by clicking the like button. <laughs> Thank you so much once again. Now, I'm going to play this for you so you can see everything. Time and date is on the top left. That way you can see the full motion of this and at the end of the run, how it's severe storms for Michigan with a lot of mixed precipitation as well. So God bless you all. I do want to pray for you all. Revelations 4. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were as a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show these things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on a throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto a crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast like a calf. And the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on a throne, who liveth forever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him, that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth forever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things for thy pleasure, and thy, and they are and were created. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Lord Jesus. I hope you have a very safe afternoon. Please hit that like on that video. Help share this information, guys. It's, it's going to be a very serious event. Hope you all have a great day today. <laughs> all glory does go to God. God of Jacob. Amen.